See flyers on other doors? You think they're targeting me? Maybe. I thought this kind of thing didn't happen anymore. None of this has ever gone away. You ever feel like something's missing? When I haven't seen my family for a while. Yeah. Do you? All the time. It's like a dark, dark hole. Can I show you something? Are you okay? Ray, what's going on? stupid kid who did a stupid thing and I hated myself for it. But you left me by myself. What was I supposed to do? I like to come out here and remind myself what it is I'm doing. What are you doing? Setting people free. Go back to your country! This is my country! I think your grandma had that too. She'd stay awake all night. Yeah. Yeah. I do sometimes because I'm scared. Of what? Of all of everything. Hi there. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Doing well. Where are you? I'm in my house. I mean, in what what part of the country? <laughs> um, Los Angeles. Okay, very good. Yeah, where are you? I'm in New York, just north okay. of New York City, a little bit north. That's nice. Yeah. I'm from New York. Oh, before uh, before Alana gets on, um, I noticed that you were, I know you didn't have a necessarily large role or anything, but in a uh, kajillionaire, were you on yeah. the set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really fun. I was there for a few days. It was great. Yeah. 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 It was a good time. I bet. I bet. Yeah. What a great cast and uh, must have been exciting. Yeah. Just watching all of that. It's really great. Hi, Alana. Hi. Hi, Adam. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Alana. Nice to see you both. Nice to see you too. Yeah, how's it Have going? Have you seen each other recently? Um, we saw each other at the Santa Barbara premiere that we had. Um, oh, right. Were you there? Okay. I, yeah, I, we were both I, there. Believe it, or, believe it or not, you know, from my living room, I've attended quite a few <laughs> film festivals in the last year, you know, or so. Yeah, yeah. I've been able to kind of explore in, you know, in a very limited way, other festivals that I don't typically get to or have gotten to and yeah. so Santa Barbara was actually one of them and um, yeah and and by the way just quit, I think I I don't remember if I had already reached out to the publicist for the or the you know the uh, press person at um, Woods Hole but um, I had had my good old friend Michael Taylor on my oh podcast. yeah and he mentioned that yeah yeah because he oh, was sorry. in Cape Cod, but he has to leave before the festival begins next week. So he, or the, later, I guess, later this weekend, I guess, it's starting yeah. in a matter of it's days. Starting, now. yeah. Just up on me. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he had to, I think he's already gone, but he was on the Cape and I mentioned, oh, are you going to, you know, because he's on the correct side of the island for this festival. So, yeah. Anyway. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to turn on this fan and let me know. Oh, sure. I, I just, um, is that yeah? Where is that are you noise Okay, um, I'm in LA at the moment. Oh, so you're both in LA. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, does yeah. that fan sound okay for yeah. audio? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I can't hear it. I know. I okay, was great. gonna. I have a. Let me turn yours off. If you know, I'll just turn it off. 
Yeah, we'll just yeah not hear from a lot. Okay, of cool. No, I was gonna yeah. turn off the, her fan. I can turn it off remotely. Oh, you're remote. Um, oh, got it. Yeah, um, uh, Michael Taylor. We actually that's how I first learned about who you are. Actually, is because when you had Michael Taylor on your show, oh, I listened to know, it. That's wonderful. I'm I'm glad to yeah. hear that. You don't I don't get enough of of those stories where you know I always assume this was the first you're hearing about it. Yeah. But, no, but, I had heard about it through Michael. Great. Um, yeah, he's yeah. such a good, he's such a um, lover of films. Yeah. That, you know, that he he just just loves them so much. Sorry, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Madeline, we're, we're, we're going to talk about you and your the film in a minute. I just, Should I just uh, leave but, until you do? <laughs> please absolutely do not leave, actually. <laughs> Well, I was gonna. I was hoping to get a little bit more time. I could hear some, some, you know, Miranda July stories, but that's okay. We'll get <laughs> um, some a lot. We'll get some uh, a lot of Waxman stories instead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, feel free if you need to talk about Miranda July. No, 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 no. But I was just quickly right before I was like, oh, I meant to double check because I at the beginning I looked at see your, you know, your both your work and everything, and then you know just time goes by and I, I it's not fresh in my mind, so I said I yeah. double check. Um, and sometimes it sparks other things. But sure. um, yeah, so hopefully, Mo, maybe you'll creatively get to uh, collaborate with Michael at some point, you know? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, I worked with him, or maybe you already know, but I was the assistant to the directors on Walking Out, okay. Um, okay. which he edited. So that's how I was just kind of working with him through helping the directors on that film. Uh, we were like him. this. Oops. I'm just gonna turn this on. Oh, I'm gonna turn off my. Thank you. Sure. Uh, we burn like the. I'm sorry. By the way, my style is often confuses people. They'll ask me several minutes in, "Have you started?" And I'll say, "Yes, I apologize. I started." Believe it or not, <laughs> Matt, Madeline, if you've li ever listened to the show, you'll see this is kind of a, my. I'm not very smart, but um, anyway. Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for our looks. <laughs> Yes, yep, um, I just thought I'd sneak that in my my looks. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, so and we bring this mix. How many films now have you directed? Uh, have you have directed? I directed? Yeah. Um, this is my first feature. It's your first uh, one where you're directing. Okay, very good. Alone, yeah. I've co-directed another feature, uh, Don Quixote, and while yeah. I was still at USC, and then I've directed a number of short films and music videos. Okay, so uh, the, how, how did what, well? How, how was this experience for you then? This piloting alone. Yeah, I mean it's um, it's been a long haul. I I've been working on this film for about seven years now, wow. coming up on seven years. Wow! Uh, since I first started in earnest, so I mean I always I when I was graduating from USC. Um, I was in the graduate program there for production and I was gra I graduated in 2014 and I was uh, kind of a deer in the headlights, you know, what am I going to do when I get out of school? Like, what am I going to do for work? Um, what I want to do is make my own films and mm. I want to be taken seriously as a, as a director and a writer and, you know, all, all the models I had in front of me were well, if you want to do that, you kind of just have to go do it yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right, like for instance, Ryan Coogler graduated a couple years ahead of me and he had made Fruitvale Station a couple years before sure. that. So I was like, yeah. Ryan Coogler is my, was my main uh, model of, well, he just did that and you know, stayed with his parents and made it work, wrote his film, made his film, and now look at him. So now his parents have moved in with him. So there you go. Right. 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 Um, not that, you know, I'm obviously not Ryan Coogler, but I just felt that no one was going to hand me my first feature, or if they did, it would take a very long time. Um, well, good. So Your role model. I, uh, good. Yeah. So I just kind of decided to start doing it. And it's been, uh, I'd say the process has challenged me in every way that a person can be challenged in life. Um, it's been a long winding road. And, you know, I, I moved to Montana to research this film. It was, a, it was a different story to begin with. And I moved there to better acquaint myself with the community and the area. And I thought I'd be there for about a year, but I was there for six years. And um, 
Yeah, and I got you know well into the film community there. Got to know all the filmmakers. Yeah, the uh, Smith. Who there, yeah. the Smith brothers. Yeah. Um, and basically, most of the people who ended up working on my this film um, t- in the end are all people I met through working on other projects in in the Montana film community. We ended up only having one person come out from LA to help us on our crew. So everyone else um, are all Montana residents, and um, a lot of our actors came from Montana too. Um, Maddie, Maddie obviously is here in LA and yep. um, Devery's from Toronto. So those were the two main people coming from elsewhere. But a lot of, it's truly a Montana made film. Um, yeah. And yeah, I hope that, you know, it's such a unique place and, and we, it's a place that you don't always see on the film screen or you see it kind of misrepresented or a very kind of superficial representation of what everyone thinks Montana is. So I guess the pro of having taken so much time to make my movie is I got a better sense. I didn't, I avoided being one of those people um, right. who just kind of comes in and makes a a superficial movie and and leaves. And then leaves Mm -hmm. carpet bagging your movie through. Ray, how'd you get cast? I mean, excuse me, uh, Madeline, how'd you get cast as Ray? You can tell me, Ray, it's all good. You're so convincing, Madeline, that I think of you as Ray (laughs) now. And I, you know, uh, you know. Um, And and you, are you Jewish? I am Jewish, yeah. I'm, I was not mitzvahed. I, my mom. Okay, my mom is Jewish, but also I think I know more about being Jewish than she is, and she's been doing it for longer. So she's been a Jew, just... professional Jew for a longer time. But yeah, you... it was never. It was just like, mom, what does this mean? As a kid, she didn't know, but we just did it. And yeah. So she's just edit that part out where I say that my mom doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> but maybe I, I should because it is mom after all. But but it's... I'll let you decide. Uh, yeah, go ahead. But I got part. past. Um, Funny enough, I have, even being in Los Angeles, I have a Montana connection in that one of my really good friends who I worked with on another film I did called Holidays um, is from Montana. And we became friends. And then I met a couple other of his friends who were from Montana. And when this movie came up, they recommended me to uh, uh, Alana and Jerry, her producer. And we did it all over FaceTime. Um, yeah. It was like COVID casting before COVID casting existed, and it was it was awesome. I mean, I I fell in love with the script and like just slowly read it because I didn't want to get too attached. Um, so I was like, I know I'm gonna oh, like. You mean if you didn't get cast? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If it didn't work out, whatever. So I was yeah. like, oh man, I really like this. Um, it's like yeah. you're front and center, and it gives you yeah. a lot to do. I mean, there's a lot of dramatic material for you here, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was definitely, I think what helped so much was being uh, in Montana, not in my home. So it really felt like I, I didn't have that comfort to go back to every night of like my familiar surroundings, um, which helped, I think, with the material and uh, the scenes. Well, you did a great job. Great Thank job. you. You're welcome. I hope you get a lot of attention and other opportunities. Um, and, um, you know, it, um, oh, by the way, yeah, so I... I was not, I was also, just because you brought it up, I was brought completely, uh, I was raised completely without any kind of religious instruction by two Jewish parents, yeah. but, you know, my dad had been, but then I married a Catholic, Black Catholic woman uh, from the South, <laughs> I'm a New Yorker, you know, Jewish, and then as a result of that relationship, I got a bar mitzvah when I turned 40. Wow, that's so, great. Last yeah. year. That's, yeah, it's not congratulations, exactly. you're a man now. Long time. That's right. That's good. Yeah. And of course, two of my smart ass friends, you know, they came and my two of my and they brought me fountain pens as gifts, you know, trying to be clever. That's like that cliche gift that 13 year old bar mitzvahs would get, you know. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, it was far more meaningful, of course, as an adult, even though I, you know, I, I don't really still adhere to institutional religion, you know, I just, mm-hmm. but I, you know, anyway. Uh, did you, so, did you have a party? Yeah, yeah, my parents, okay. this was a while ago. It was like weeks before my son was born. So it was a very powerful time, you know, yeah. experience. Wow. That's really, yeah, it means more because you've decided 
to do it. Well, yeah, it's right. And it's part of a process of self-exploration and your identity and whatever, totally. you know, yeah, uh, for sure. So, you know, the themes of uh, anti-Semitism, et cetera, are so resonant right now, you know, and relative uh, because of, you know, headlines. Uh, I know you said you started this, it sounds like even before Trump threw in his orange hat, or whatever, mm-hmm. you, you know, uh, but uh, right, because you kind of started this story. I know it's a, it's evolved, but it, it was start. Mm-hmm. You started seven years ago. Was that one of the initial ideas that you had around the theme, the film? Mm. Was like mm-hmm. anti-Semitism uh, is, is 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 a big thing in this film. Yeah, it uh, it actually kind of evolved to that. Okay. And, um, what happened was the original, original version of this movie was called Cheyenne is Burning. And the main character was actually a, a Native American girl, kind of what became the Chrissy B character in the movie. Um, and I started off, I just had this idea that I wanted to write a movie about a mm-hmm. Native girl who feels disconnected from her culture is kind of, I didn't have the words for it, but is experiencing the the inherited effects of historical trauma. And Mm. so I set about to write that. And that's what brought me to Montana um, because I said it specifically in Montana, specifically with the Northern Cheyenne tribe there and spent a lot of time kind of becoming friends and and being a part of events there and, and being a part of the community there. And getting a lot of feedback as well and working with people that's actually Devery became was originally cast as the lead role in this movie when the lead was uh Cheyenne and uh basically a couple years into the process I I just couldn't shake very long story short I couldn't shake that uh the self-consciousness I had about being a non-native person telling a native story and I feel like it's it's something that the movie industry and and the greater mm. culture at large is something that started talking about that. I'd say a lot more Absolutely. Uh, around sure. Sure. like 2014 and beyond. And so I was kind of writing that in my own personal way and really looking at myself in a different light and and learning a lot more about what native people experience and how they have to how they live out their historical trauma and are very connected to it because it's coming up against they're coming up against it in all sorts of ways to this day um and it also helped me through i uh, became close friends with a few people and and it just they started asking me more about my jewish history and my my parents and my grandparents and my grandparents are holocaust survivors and that's you know that's not something I've ever really thought that much about. It's just a fact that I've known. Um, But I just be started thinking about myself in a different light. And and I started thinking about myself as someone who carries the historical trauma of my grandparents having survived this horrific event. And, and maybe in a way I was actually writing about myself and Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I really didn't know that. And so as my first feature, especially, and because I just became too self-conscious and felt like I was maybe a part of a problem instead Mm, of a mm -hmm. solution, a part of the solution that I was hoping to be. So I started over and I, um, this also happened to be in 2016 when Trump was elected. And suddenly on the morning after the election, there were neo-Nazi flyers which are the exact flyers we use in the film, um, they appeared on the doorstep of the synagogue in Missoula, which is where I was living, which is supposed to be a sort of left uh, green, you know, town in a very red state. And so I, and from there, you know, you can research all the events that have happened since 2016. And so all that kind of combined And I changed the whole script, but the core of it and a lot of the characters are still actually exactly the same. It's just a Jewish historical trauma story instead of an indigenous historical trauma story. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Yeah, not not all 
racism or anti-Semitism in this case is also always so blatant and mm -hmm. obvious or, you know, like what we're used to, which are, you know, signs and people uh, yelling, you know, pejoratives, et cetera. But sometimes right. like there's a scene with, um, with Madeline's character Ray and her mom and her mom's new boyfriend mm -hmm. and just his absolute, you know, level of ignorance yeah. You know, with him high-fiving, what was the name of the... Uh, the Hamsa. The Hamsa, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is a, it's for those watching or listening, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a usually metal, right? Or, or, or I guess it doesn't it have be anything. anything but, yeah. Yeah, it's, I have one of those. And, but it's, uh, it's like, you know, a hand and a, and he, and it's on the wall and they just tell, you know, they're, you're, the mother is sort of describing what it's about, what it stands for, or maybe Ray was and the character mm -hmm. of Ray and so and and he high fives it and then it's also you know it's benign but it's it's, yeah. it's you know but it, it just uh it's what we deal with anyone deals with you know on some level you know yeah. especially when you're stuck out in Montana you know yeah, I, and that's, such... you know th those little moments with specifically that's Jim right. um right. And, and also uh Ray's ex-boyfriend Johnny he says that line about Jewishy eyes. Oh, right. My eyes look yeah. kind of Jewishy. All, all those little micro things are are all pulling from my life. Um, right. These these are oh, things sure. that I've experienced, and and with the the Christian ladies who are you know flyering early in the morning, that was almost word for word um, sure. an experience sure. I had. Right. Can we see your horns? You know, oh, they're so cute. But <laughs> hey, Madeline, have you have you had any? Uh, have you run into this? I mean, if you're, I don't know if did you grow up in in where did did you mention where you grew up? I grew up in LA. You did. So you've yeah. grown up and ha and currently live still. And I don't know where you went to school, et cetera, But in a large city where there's many Jewish people or just other people from different ethnic backgrounds. So maybe like me in New York City, I was relatively protected from. Yeah, you know, anti-Semitism. But I but. think I think I think similarly. I I also my schooling was kind of all over the place in terms of like I went to a Jewish preschool when I was little, and then I went to like a, a Christian Science middle school, um, and just yeah. like my parents, it was just like whatever, wherever you could go, wherever you could get in. And right. Yeah. Whatever we can afford and where you can exactly. get in. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, it was sure. like all different, uh, di different experiences from there to there but I think even sometimes we do it to ourselves um in addition to like mm. these micro that and we're even unaware of like just being you know like oh that's my Jewish mother or something mm -hmm. like that you know mm -hmm. with whatever they do I think there's there's a line but I think there's things to be conscious of that it's not yeah. always coming from outside that sometimes it is even coming from inside that shame or that like little bit of um uncertainty and manifesting as as that you, what was it like for you uh on the set being so uh maybe you know in such a foreign environment for you and then dealing with such dark themes not having maybe your typical support system around you at the time I don't know if it, it started getting dark for you yeah I think there were there were certain moments one stands out particularly like that I didn't even expect to be as emotional as it was, was when we filmed in the hospital mm. and I was waking up. And mm. I think the first thing I ask is where's my mom? And she wasn't there, like, she's in a different state. She's not there. Uh, and it just like being hooked up to oxygen and to IVs and to all of that, I think yeah. really kind of freaked me out. I also have a fear, like, I don't like hospitals and, and doctors. They, scare me uh so i who, think you know anyone who does or <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I guess there are people that, that might like doctors but go ahead thank you for that response yeah <laughs> i i am um, so i think that just like yeah. being hot, it just made me feel sick and unwell and really vulnerable and yeah. it did it did feel quite dark and mm -hmm. then um yeah so I just, I just remember that kind of surprising me and what I thought the scene would be like and how it would go it just kind of changed in the moment which was exciting but also scary um well the yeah. film is called we burn like this there's some 
burning that's been had got had been going on at some points in the past we find out lots of backstory um and uh it's uh directed by alana waxman and and starring madeline cogman um and it's going to be at the uh woods hole film festival um i think it's you can watch it if you're attending virtually i think uh, once the uh, the festival begins on the, on July 31st. You can watch it uh, online, stream it. But uh, there is a screening in Woodsall on the um, 7th of, of August at 6.15. Okay. Yeah. So are you going to be and able I'll, to... Or no, you're both in LA. You're not going to be able to go, right? I am, I am coming, actually. What? <laughs> you're going to go? That's wonderful. Yeah, I'm coming. Uh, our producer and editor, Marshall Granger, is coming with me as well. Um, so we'll be there. So you can join us in person. We'll do a live Q and A following oh. the film screening. Um, and we also just got into Flickr's Rhode Island International Film Festival. So if you miss us at Woods Hole, you can you can jump right into that virtual festival right after. Rhode Island International. Mm -hmm. Riff, oh, gotcha. Okay, mm -hmm. and is there is that is that the only other one coming up coming up? Rather, um, we are also going to be having our yeah. uh, two two more exciting screenings that we know about so far. We're going to have our international premiere. I can't announce that yet, okay. or I don't know when this is coming what out. What continent? But, yeah. Uh, in France, we're going to be going to France with our the continent of France. The I continent. listen to my favorite continent. Europe. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's um, right. Uh, uh, and uh, that will be coming up soon. And then we're also going back Ma home. Madeline, you should you should go to that one. Oh, just, I am. Right. Yes, we're going. We're going. <laughs> okay. Um, well, there was just one that just just happened or is happening. So, just happened rather. So I guess it wasn't in Cannes, but uh, there was a there's probably, mm -hmm. there's lots of other wonderful festivals there. We turned them down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wise choice. Um, and then we're also going to be coming home to Billings. We're going to be the closing night film of Montana International oh, Film Festival. Fantastic. Yeah. You should go. You're definitely going to go to that one. Yeah, we'll be there for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know, Madeline, are you able to attend at these? The it's Montana one as well. I don't know any of them. Well, yeah, the, yeah. France, the France. Doing France, go. did Santa Barbara, and doing Montana. Oh, with fantastic. My, my family's coming to Montana because wow. my dad's obsessed with Montana too. Why? So he, visited one, he visited one weekend when we were shooting oh. and he thinks it's, he just had the best time. He went to vintage stores in Montana and got the only two shirts he wears. Really? So he just, he thinks like he is. Long way to go for that. shirts, but yeah. I, I would, I, I think I understand exactly where he's coming from yeah, because it's you, so rare gonna, to find that You'll love perfect. this guy. But yeah, he's very excited to come back to Montana for his homecoming. <laughs> um, oh, that sounds great. I, I think I was, no, I don't think I've been in Mont Montana. You should come. Yeah. <laughs> when is that? When is that one? Please say in March or February or something like that. That'd be uh, September, <laughs> September 18th, which is uh, a beautiful, my, it's that's a, when the it fall starts? is beautiful. How long, how many days do you even know? Uh, the festival itself is four days. I know our screening, that's the closing night. Okay, because so. I was going to say my birthday is on the 24th, September. So would have been a nice way to celebrate. I, I've not celebrated a, a birthday in Montana before. I can guarantee you that much. Yeah. Well, bring the fam. Get some nice shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get some shirts. <laughs> um. People should check out. Is there is there any like place I could send people? I think there is a website, if I'm not mistaken, right? Isn't there? I think I looked that up. Yeah. We burn like this. It's just weburnlikethis.com is our website. And, and uh, I'm yeah. updating it. So you can find all the information. You can contact us. Um, you can find more info about us and about the film and uh, see where we're screening next. Right. There's a, there's a email, a little newsletter sign up and all. So yeah, there's a little yeah. contact form. That right. You okay. And you're on me. social media, et cetera. So, uh, yeah. and yeah. And Madeline, uh, I don't want to put you on the spot. I, I, so, but if you, I don't know if you have any other things coming up, maybe you can. Make... 
Um, I have, I'm on the show called The Rookie uh, on ABC. So you can catch me there. And The Rookie. Yep. So check it I, out. I know I'm watching it. It's a great show. It's real fun. Um, uh, and hopefully more soon. Well, the series sounds great. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, it's a And fun. you say it's called ABC. Okay. Not, not familiar with it. You can um, search it. I'll send you a link. <laughs> you don't have to send me a link. I think I could find <laughs> You were being sarcastic. Uh, maybe you weren't. Uh, as I said, not terribly bright, but anyway, uh, I really appreciate it. And I, I want people to go, I urge people to see it. And, um, and uh, it's got some important, it's an important film. It's an important story there, I think. Thank you. So I wish you yeah. luck with it and all, at all the festivals at all those myriad festivals you mentioned. We'll see Thank you there. You. Okay. Yeah. Montana. Yeah, thanks for your time. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. Let's, we'll do it again. Great. All that's right. Fun. Okay. Have a nice uh, uh, day. Go get some lunch. Well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care. All right. Nice um, to meet you. Nice to Bye. meet you. Bye.